Good morning, everyone. Our gospel lesson today is taken from Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 11 to 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leopards approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. When I was asked to speak today, I hesitated because I know I'm not worthy to be delivering a message, but I hope that I am a servant of God. And then I thought about it. I do so many other things, and God gave me some talents to be able to teach, and I thank Sister Patty today for those kind words. I had all good students, and I hope I appreciate what you have done with your lives. So I thought, Barbara, you should show your gratefulness to God for all the good things he has done for you. You can do this one small task, so I ask you to bear with me. And another thing, I just looked at the back of your bulletin, and it said, do not worry about anything. That really helps me, I hope. Okay, let us pray. With hearts full of appreciation because of your goodness and with thanksgiving God in our souls because of your boundless grace, we join together on this day of thanksgiving to remember always your loving kindness and your wonderful mercy, and we offer our prayers of gratefulness for the many blessings that are ours. Amen. I chose today as our lesson from Luke chapter 17, the story of the ten lepers. One day Jesus, as you know, was walking along the road to the beautiful city of Jerusalem, and the road was narrow, dusty, and unpaved. Only the rich could ride in a caravan, sitting high above the back of a camel. But Jesus loved to walk along the road and admire the beautiful countryside. He thought of God's love and his goodness. Then Jesus saw a group of men walking toward him. He thought they must be old and tired and weary, for they walked very slowly. But as they came closer, he saw they were not old, but they were sick. These men had leprosy the dreaded of all diseases of that time. These men had to live away from home, from their families, and they led a very sad and lonely life. But as they came close to Jesus, they saw him, and they heard of the wonderful things he could do. They knew he healed the sick, he made the blind to see, and he even raised a man from the dead. They called out to Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. When Jesus saw them, he, his heart was filled with love and pity for them. His loving heart was filled with unhappiness that they should have to suffer. So in his kind and gentle way, he said, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. 
These men knew Jesus had the power to heal them. They had faith in him, so they turned away and went toward the place where the priests could be found. But suddenly, as they turned away, a miracle happened. Their bodies were cured. They were clean. They no longer had leprosy. What a wonderful song of thankfulness should have been in their hearts that moment. But what happened? They were so homesick for their families, so happy that they were healed, that they hurried away, each group going in his own really selfish direction. That is, nine of them went. Nine of them departed. One man was grateful enough, though, to turn back and to give thanks. He turned back toward Jesus. He fell at his knees. He bowed his head down in the dust of the road, showed how grateful he was for the great mercy that was shown to him. He sang out in a loud voice his thong, song of thanksgiving and praise so that anyone passing by would know how thankful he was. Jesus looked down at this man and said, Were not there ten lepers? Were there not ten lepers cured? Where are the other nine? Only one returned to give thanks, to be healed from that dreaded disease. Sometimes, you know, we forget to give thanks for our many blessings. Are we not like sometimes those ten lepers? We pray to God when we have problems when we are sick, when a loved one is sick, when we're facing a difficult decision. But then when everything seems fine again, we go on our merry way and we forget God. We forget to humbly bow to our heads with thankful hearts for all our blessings. And when we share with others, are we not like the one leper then who returned to give thanks? Should we not only at this time of the year, but always remember to give thanks for our many blessings? Instead of woe is me, should we not be thankful? Yes, let us give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to God for all he has done for us. Because he has given us, you know, the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, his Son, who died for us that may, we may have eternal life. You know, we can either be hateful or we can be grateful. Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18 says, Always be joyful. Always keep on praying. No matter what happens, always be thankful. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. When we consider all God's gifts and all that we possess, a grumbling mood of discontent truly would give way to thankfulness. Calvin Coolidge said, We have been a most favored people. We ought to be a most grateful people. We have been a most blessed people. We ought to be a most thankful people. You know, there's a story told about a farmer who raised pigs, and we live in a farming area, so many of us are acquainted with pigs, right? Well, his wife and a friend were standing at a far corner of the lot just watching these pigs, and they, these pigs were happily rooting beneath the trees in an oak grove, searching out for acorns. The wife remarked, You know, I think pigs are a lot like people in some ways, she said. I'm not referring to their grunting or wallowing and things usually associated with pigs, but look at them eating those acorns. Not once have they looked up to see where their food was coming from. It seems it's sort of like grace before a meal. Naturally, we can't expect grace from a pig, but how many of us 
fail to look up and give God thanks before eating? How many of us have failed to be thankful for things that we take for granted? Now, I'm suggesting that at your family gathering this year at Thanksgiving, you might play this game of thanks. Challenge each one to name something they are thankful for in three seconds or less, and it can't be the same thing, without repeating what someone else has said. Anyone who hesitates would be out of the game. There are always blessings to be thankful for. Colossians 3, verse 17 says, Whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Paul describes our newness in Christ. Thankfulness is the only characteristic mentioned more than once. In fact, he mentions it three times. Be thankful, Paul says. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Surprisingly, Paul's instruction to be thankful is astonishing when we consider that he wrote this letter while he was in prison, and yet he was thankful. Today, let us make the choice to have an attitude of thankfulness. Remember that a positive attitude is the right attitude. Choose the attitude of gratitude. From now until Thanksgiving, why not try this little experiment designed to increase your Thanksgiving capacity? Every day, surprise someone. How long has it been since you thanked, perhaps, the mailman if you were there when he delivered your mail, the newspaper boy, or someone in the grocery store who helped you? Take the opportunity to surprise people with gratitude. You'll be training yourself day by day to seek out the good around you rather than the more attention-catching bad. Every day, we should be thanking God for something you have never thanked him for until now. How about this beautiful creation that he has created this fall? When you were driving along admiring the beautiful leaves, did you thank God? Didn't you think this was one of the most beautiful falls we have had in a long time? The scenery was just outstanding. Did you thank God for that? Then it got a little cooler, though, and this week it's really cold. And did you thank God when you had that, those warm clothes to put on? Discipline yourself to thank God for a different blessing each day and eventually you will realize the magnitude of God's Christ's sacrifice for you. How lucky we are. Above all, give thanks every day with a grateful heart. Give thanks to God for all he has done. Give thanks to God each day for the gift of his Son, who brought us salvation and taught us the great commandment to love one another. Let our thanksgiving go beyond words and give evidence by our actions in the sharing of our blessings with the hungry, with the needy, and the lonely. There are many people out there who are living alone, who are in nursing homes, who need a visit. There's a cute little story, I think. There was a couple, they were riding through the countryside. In fact, they were antiquing, and they came to this home where they saw this sign, antiques for sale. So the wife said to the husband, let's stop here and go into this place. It looks interesting. It was a large, older home. So they rapped on the door, and a dear old lady came to the door, and she said, oh, come in. Come into our parlor. So they went into the parlor, and she said, have a seat. And by that time, her sister came out and uh, greeted them, and they said, how about a cup of tea? And the couple thought, hmm, okay, we'll have a cup of tea. And they brought some cookies, and they were there for a while talking, and finally they, the couple looked at each other and thought, well, where are these antiques? They said, oh, we thank you for this tea, but we really came to see the antiques. And the lady, one lady said, oh, but we are the antiques. We just 
don't get to see many people, and we like to have visitors. So that's even a cheery greeting to an elderly person means a lot. Just like her dear greeting to me today meant so much. Thank you again. So we can say as Christians, I still believe in amazing grace, that there is power in the blood, that he walks with me and he talks with me, that because he lives, I can face tomorrow, all because of the old rugged cross. Yes, count your blessings, name them one by one, count your many blessings, see what God has done. Thanks be to God. Thank you for listening.